lab color. Now I use this in a grape, but I want to keep this as a separate video altogether because that actually was the black and white. So um, here is lab color in a nutshell. Image mode lab color. I'm going to just flatten this image. So lab color is represented by the human eye. You know, we we see color and when we see darkness and lightness uh, differently because uh, by magically turning off the lights in the room, nothing in the room actually changes color. It's just there's no light in the room. Okay, with an RGB world, it would be if we saw it as RGB, we would say, well. The lights are going down in the room. Well, now all um, reds are going to magically change to a darker red. <laughs> so uh, the whole uni whole Earth as we knew it, you know, would be based upon uh, whoever's in the room at the time and how well they could see. <laughs> It'd be a really tripped out place to live. So lab color uh, works because it, it's basically working off the human eye. So it's separating color from darkness. So that means that uh, with especially colors that are out there um, that we see all the time around us is man-made products. Man-made products do not trickle into the lab colors because lab color is very hard to print. So in nature, uh, there's some forms of nature that we see as far as colors go and we're like, wow, that's a really cool color, especially on fish. Uh, we see like these really cool colors that we never see really hardly ever in life. Um, these are known as imaginary colors and what happens is lab color goes into the furthest spectrum of color. So meaning Photoshop has got RGB in it. You know it's got a, a wide variety of gambit of colors um, and sure, certainly it's, it goes into the millions of colors right. So if you think about lab, lab goes into the millions upon millions upon millions of colors. So that's that's what's nice about it. So we see colors in Photoshop now, or you know we see photo colors that we hardly ever see in life because of lab. So that's the beauty of lab. And to see these colors, one only has to go into the curves feature within Photoshop and make sure you're on your background. So background image and image adjustments curves and I did this trick before but again you know I kinda wanted to break down lab and how it works and show you why I use it all the time and by far is the most used trick in my arsenal what I want to do is duplicate this so I can tweak it out and then show you what it looks like before and after Okay, so here's the A channel, and it works like this. You have to balance things. So if I have a curve that goes this way, and it's on this line, this is the threshold at which the curve lives between here and here. So what happens is I have to balance that with the other side of the curve. So now the curve can exist from here to here, and I'm looking at these lines right here as the measurement. And this curve already has, and I don't want to clip into it. See this curve right here? I do not want to clip into it. I want to just stay on the outer ring of the curve. And the curve starts here. And I want to use the same for the other side. Okay. Okay, now these are blueberries. And this is what the blueberries look like before. I think they're blueberries or plums. Yeah, they might be plums, but here's what they look like after. Isn't that blue cool? And with lab colors, you'll notice that blue is always just very blue and vivid. Uh, the problem is when you use lab colors on a human being, it, they look radioactive. So, you know, use lab colors effectively. Um, use them on <laughs> most things, but try not to use them on people. You'll see they start glowing in the dark. Alright, so that is lab color, and enjoy. Let's move on to the next video.